Llamas are amazing creatures. Have you had any experience with them? No, and one of the questions I had was the differences between the llamas and the alpacas. Great question. So llamas and alpacas are like German shepherds and poodles. This guy here, I sheared about three pounds of fleece off of him. Um, he's a 300 pound llama. A 150 pound alpaca will shear 10 pounds of fleece. Wow. So they've just been completely, totally separated, s selected for different things. So, And where are they indicative of again? Um, yeah, or? South America, the okay. Andes Mountains, um, Bolivia, Chile, and Peru are the main countries there. Right. So, so llamas are, the llamas fit in perfect with trail days here and they're perfect here at the reserve because they are super environmentally friendly creatures. They have very unique feet. And if Junior's behaving himself today, we'll be able to pick one up here. Pick it up, Junior. So that their weight gets distributed over this whole pad surface, not just back here, but that whole surface. So they'll leave less impact going down the trail than we do. If we walked them through sand or through mud, that this, this 300 pound boy would leave less footprint than you or I would. Anything that's a little bit slick or rocky because of that pad on there, they can actually get more traction versus a horse that's gonna, or a mule or something that's just gonna slide off. So that's part of what makes llamas such great pack stock is their versatility. And the kind of the thumb rule we use with llamas is if you can get there, without having to use your hands to crawl up something, the llama can go with you. So anyway, but, um, so I'm just gonna give you a really quick llama's safety 101, and then we'll head down the trail and we'll talk a little bit about some things that way. So um, the, um, I'm gonna let you, actually let you take Junior here. He's a really nice boy. Um, so rope safety is really important when we're dealing with animals. Um, these guys are, are super well trained. They've, they've done all these trails numerous times with me. They do trails at home with me. Um, they're very intelligent, very smart, but they're like teenage girls. They're gonna see if you know the rules, even though they know the rules, they're gonna test you. So anyway, so we're just gonna do a real quick, real quick safety thing with them here. Um, we use a lot of rope. They're, um, llamas are, they were kind of social distancing before it was the trend. Um, they like their personal space. So we try to stay arm's length away from them. Once you've walked him a little bit, if you want to pet him and scratch him, you can sure scratch him here on the shoulder, rub him on the neck. They don't like their heads touched. I don't like some stranger touching my head, so I, I can, can understand that. I show them that respect. So you, again, you want to be, kind of target yourself arm's length away. All of this excess rope we have just because if we need to tie them together or something that way, we've got rope to do so. Um, but I'd, I want you just to bundle it in your hand like this. Um, the, and not, not wrap it around your hand. This is a huge safety mistake people make. They think, well, they won't get away from me. Uh -huh. Well, if they would spook and take off or something would happen, they're taking you with them. You know, so again, just so that's rope safety 101. And so I will, um, I will let you take Junior. I'm gonna let you take Finn, Aaron. And I'm gonna tie a couple girls together and we'll start our hike. Okay, let go. So there you go. And so what we'll do is try to leave about the length of a llama between you and the llama ahead of you, okay? And so we wanna talk, we want to um, let, it, let anything ahead of us know that we're there. Um, we're not hunting, so we don't need to sneak. So we're just gonna walk a little ways, find a shady spot, and then we'll talk about a few things with trail etiquette. an awesome philosophy just to have in life in general and really important when we're out using public use trails especially. Um, so there's a little hand gesture thing that really is useful to help remember the, the steps for um, the, the leave no trace principle. So the first one is plan and prepare. So have a list of supplies that you need, get a map, let somebody know where you're going, you know, water bottles, all of those types of things. So plan and prepare. Two is walk and camp on durable surfaces. Okay, so we want to stay as much as we can, it's right less damaging trail. to the trail system um, to do that than to, to try to go around things. Because every time we go off trail, we're knocking vegetation down and some of that's going to come back and some of that's not. So um, principle three is um, um, taking care of any waste that you might have on the trail. So whether that's picking up any garbage that other people leave behind and sadly we usually end up having to pick up a few things when we're out hiking and if, when nature calls and we're not near the outhouses and we need to take a break um, you want to get 200 feet off trail 
200 feet away from any water source, dig a cat hole, do your, do your business, and then bury it, okay? So that's three, um, proper, proper disposal of waste. Um, four is don't, don't pick things up and bring them with you because nobody else can enjoy them that way. So take pictures, not samples. Okay, so and we love we love pictures with the llamas. So we'll, there's actually a couple good photo op spots we'll have down the trail there. Five is properly maintaining and caring for a fire. Okay, which we're not going to have today, but but not leaving a fire unattended, uh, drowning it twice with water um, to make sure that it's out. So that's five. Okay, six is respect other wildlife. Okay, so if we you know if we see a deer, if we see something here on the trail enjoy it grab that camera take your pictures don't crowd their personal space this is their home we're visitors okay so respect wildlife and then seven is respect other people on the trail you know um so so talking again as we're we're walking along talking so people know that we're there um and being friendly to people that are out and about enjoying nature we all want to have a good day today and and so being friendly and respectful is is a big part of that that leads us into trail etiquette if we meet somebody on the trail who has the priority okay and that's going to be the one time that we're going to get off horses our have complete total priority they're big creatures that can be spirited and and if spooked we don't quite know what they're going to do and for safety purposes everybody yields to horses um, bikers mountain bikers are they yield to horses and to hikers um, again because it's easier for them to get out of the way and it's hard for them to get off trail so they'll stop we'll go around them um, and then hikers you know can, can kind of yield to whatever's around them so with the when we add pack stock and when we're doing the pack our pack llamas here or if if we had pack horses and things that way we just pretty much give a yield to everything that way um, because we've got more than ourselves to deal with here um, so if we met somebody we would stop and we would step off trail. And if you can do it safely, you always want to move off trail downhill. About uh, an animal length off the trail, okay? And the reason for that is that it gives the horse or the other hikers or whatever, the bicyclist, a chance to get by us. Then our animal isn't going to jump, swing back into them as they go by. Uh, we get to where our llamas can see what's coming and going, so we're safe that way. Um, and then if, if the horse or somebody with a dog, something spooked, they were going to go uphill, and it's less likely that they would, the person on that animal would get injured. If they went downhill, the horse could stumble, and they'd end up at the bottom of the ravine. If they go uphill, even if the horse stumbles, they're just going to land right here. Um, so if at all possible, we try to go downhill to give a pass. So that's going to be the just bugs it's fine that's going to be the one time that we're going to yield um to, to we're going to you know, purposely go off trail so and then okay. tell the llama to duck and they should come right under it with you so okay. in theory we'll see <laughs> okay duck down cappy duck cappy duck good girl this would be one of the places where we did if we'd break that exception or that rule of going downhill we can't safely get down here and have something go by. So we would try and get way up, uphill off the trail, but we would probably try and get probably 50 feet off so that we didn't spook something going by. And that's the other thing too. I know the rules here at the reserve are all dogs must be on a leash. That's a good philosophy in general. Um, Cause you can imagine hitting a narrow spot like this and somebody's dog coming bounding towards us. You know, that's not, not gonna go well. We don't have time to, to get out of the way. Um, the llamas are naturally guarding animals. They don't like canines. Um, and so they would probably spit at the dog and stomp at the dog. And, and so it just, again, then we lose that seven respectful to other people on the trail that's gone. So anyway, so look at the stopping point here. I'm gonna quiz you guys, see if you were paying attention. I'm gonna give you the hand signals. You tell me to leave no trace principle. Okay, are you ready? Plan and prepare. Stay, stay on the trail? Yeah, hike and camp on durable surfaces. Okay, so stay on the trail. Three. Uh, leave no trace, dig a hole. Yep, <laughs> when, na when nature calls, dig a hole. <laughs> and, and pick up any other garbage and stuff that you find along, so. Uh, take a picture, don't disturb the wildlife. Correct, yep. Leave things behind, take a picture so you can enjoy it later.
fire safety, right. Don't leave fires unattended. Drown it with water, stir it, but down it with water again. Make sure your fires are out. That's a leading cause of these big, huge, multiple hundreds of thousands of acre wildfires is humans, human error. So um, fire safety is really important. So. Give you, give you a hint. Respect the wildlife, whether that's the wildlife that's with you or the wildlife that we meet along the trail. And re respect the other campers or the other hikers that you meet out on the trail. Yep. <laughs> so, so giving respect, yielding right of way, and just plain being friendly because we're all out here and enjoying the reserve. So, okay, we'll get turned around here and we'll journey on back. Spin lady way back on spin. itself, so we're going to make sure that I'm going to make sure I talk, probably just talk to you guys, but then if somebody's around there, they know that we're coming. Again, so we're not going to, not going to startle any hiker. Um, if they've got a dog, they can make sure they've got it on a leash, um, and then we're, we're just announcing ourselves in, in a seven respectful way. So. We use the llamas hunting camps, use them to haul their gear in and haul their harvest out. Um, a lot of campers and stuff in the back country will use llamas to haul all their gear and everything. Um, for here, I've taken some people out, hauled them to a campsite and those types of things. Um, they can carry lunches, do all that kind of stuff for us. And even if they're not carrying the gear, if they're just the saddle like that, they're just great hiking companions. You know, you're not out here alone. They love it just as much as we do. Um, so it's just, just fun to come and hang out with the llamas. So everybody ready? Earlier in the spring, there was, this was muddy, okay? And you can see the damage that people did by bypassing that mud hole. They've basically created a second trail here, a second path. And that's going to take a long time for that to regenerate itself and, and come back. And, and so it's, instead of being a nice hiking path, it's going to just get broader and then, then we'll have more issues with erosion and things that way. So this is a great example of not following number two and the damage that we can do to a trail network. So.